Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Everyday Joy Podcast. I'm your host, Ash Couchman, and I cannot wait to find moments of joy with you today. We're going to dive right in to our words to live by. Let's hear the word of God. Truly, my soul finds rest in God. My salvation comes from him. Truly, he is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will never be shaken. That is from Psalms 62, 1 to 2. Tilly, love having you in here. Hello. It's so nice to just sit down and talk about Jesus together because we do this a lot anyway. (laughs) (laughs) It's our favorite topic. We're looking at Psalms 62, verse 1 to 2. Truly my soul finds rest in God. My salvation comes from him. Truly he is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will never be shaken. What are your first thoughts about this? Mm. This one, I think probably like we were chatting just like the other day regarding um, even yesterday's scripture, just knowing that the Lord is with you, that he is your rock. And, you know, and it says it twice. Um, my salvation comes from him. Truly, he's my rock and my salvation. Mm. And so we know that that is also um, used for emphasis when they're writing in the Old Testament as well. So it's just kind of like alliterating the fact again, like God is our salvation. Mm. It is not from ourselves that we are saved. Yeah. Um, it is not from people around us, you know, that he is the one that we get that promise of eternity from. And it's just that, I guess, again, another promise, another scripture of assurance. Mm. Yeah. When you read something like this, for me, it's like there's such security in knowing that there is nothing that we could do Mm. to make ourselves or to make ourselves save, like to give ourselves salvation. Like it is purely through the Lord. And there's something about knowing that when we are saved, when we have a, a faith, we truly can find rest. And I and this topic keeps coming up even last week as well of when we trust that God is our salvation, that God is our rock, mm. that the truth of who God is, that he sent Jesus to die on a cross for our sins, that he rose again. No, like amen. when that is the foundation of your life, it is really hard to be shaken yes. deep in your core in the sense of you can a thousand percent be stressed about things. It, I, I understand that there's going to be moments, but I know for me at the end of the day, I know that I am saved yeah. by grace because of a God who loves me. And when you know that, and look, I'm not saying that I don't have stresses and fears and doubts every now and again, or on the daily, but it's it's not a deep heart issue. It's yes. a it's an environmental issue. It's not a fear of what is going to happen in the long you're term. Anchored. Yeah, yeah. It's only ever the short term or like the physical or the or the fleshly things. But the salvation thing is like not a worry or a fear mm. because you know who God is and you can trust yeah. that your salvation is secure in him. Yeah. I mean, I mean, Paul even describes these as light and momentary troubles. So yeah. we know that just in sheer comparison of salvation and eternity with God, that these are light and momentary, even though they don't feel, <laughs> they don't yeah. always feel light and momentary, but just in comparison to what eternity and how good heaven is going mm-hmm. to be, They really are light and momentary. Yeah, it's so true. It actually made me think of a conversation I had the other night um, with some friends. We were just talking about like people that we we love and that we know who are far from Jesus Mm. and how, you know, how desperately we would love them to be close to God or even know God and, and, and believe his gospel and have that salvation the thing that's so interesting about what you just said is this earth is momentary. Mm. And so at the end of the day, I would rather live a life that's difficult sometimes knowing that I am saved Mm. because in the scheme of eternity, the 90 years that I live on this earth is a blip, like yeah. realistically. And I think that's what Paul's talking about. I know, but I think that's what Paul's talking about is like, yes. 
it's literally a moment, like in the scheme of eternity, in a scheme of our life. we can't even comprehend what no. that's going to be like. And I very often will just be like, Lord, I thank you that I don't need to understand that. Yep. We're moving on. Like I try not to <laughs> dwell on it too much because it freaks me out. But I just go, my brain will understand it or probably don't even have I, – we're not even going to get into it because I was about to say probably won't even have a brain, but I am not. No, we'll have bodies in heaven. Yeah, but do we have a brain? Well, that's part of our body, right? Is it? Well, I mean, I always think like, you know, Jesus it was a physical resurrection. That's true. Um, so I'm pretty sure Jesus still had his brain that's intact. That's true. Okay, he... guys, do not take any of what we just said in the last... <laughs> just do some theology searching <laughs> yeah. away from what we're We've talking got about. no idea. Anyway, we're getting off track. But at the end of the day, when you know that your salvation is firm, the things of life don't toss you in throw you in the water like well, other very similar would. what you were saying yesterday about the weeds tumbling mm. yeah yeah completely and i and to be honest i think it just shows us that god wants us to trust in him yes. and to trust in the salvation that we've been given through jesus yeah because and i and i I, ch- I challenge myself all the time right because whenever you read scripture it talks about Trust God, give God your worries, hand everything over to him because of his like his salvation, because of all of these things. Like we yeah. can trust that God's got it in the end. Yes. But how much time do we waste worrying and stressing and not surrendering it to God? Yeah. And like I even think of just some of my close girlfriends that do not know the Lord, that don't walk with him and might even outright reject Jesus as savior. Um, and they are going through some really tough battles and my heart breaks for them because all I want is for them to know that God is their salvation. He is their fortress. He is their rock. And I'm like, if you're not getting healing from the Lord, where are you getting your healing mm. from? Like the metrics that you have set up for your own life, it's not working. Like there isn't this living water that you're able to draw from because you're rejecting what the Bible says is true. Mm-hmm. And I'm watching them go through things where I'm like, what is the end result of where you're going because I don't know where you're going to get wholeness from. You don't know where you're going to get wholeness from. You don't even know if you're going to be able to really ever be fully healed. They always are very, they talk about themselves in ways that's very detrimental and it's almost like there's no hope, but they don't even know if there's ever going to be a point where they're not going to be like messed up, you know? Mm. And I'm like, there will be, but you've got to come to Jesus like yeah. he's, there's no way in the scripture where the Lord's like you can come to me for this but not for this he never separates it nothing is off limits you can bring the mess to God God wants your mess because mm-hmm. that is where he works in you and he wants to be your salvation he desires for everyone to know him and it's so yeah it's very hard watching and I'm always praying like we got to pray for our non-Christian friends you know all the yeah. time so they can see that God is their rock, their salvation, yeah. their fortress, everything that this verse is saying. Totally. And I, and I think that's a great reminder to pray for our friends and family mm. who don't know Jesus. Like I'm so passionate about seeing people come to know Jesus and get close to him. That's why this whole podcast exists, right? Yeah. It's so that if you go, oh, my goodness, I've just become a Christian, I don't even know where to start, <laughs> there's a resource available. Or It's not even just for new Christians. It's for mm. you know people who have been walking with the Lord for a long time. And, and I think that it's such a great reminder that when you know the gift of salvation, when you know the goodness of God in your life, when you when you know that you can't be shaken, we need to be able to give that to other people. And... We need to be able to pray for other people and ask that the Lord would just reveal himself to them and and that they would have soft hearts and open minds to to see the goodness of God and the and the truth of the gospel. And so that's a great reminder for me as well. Sometimes I feel like I get lazy. Sometimes I feel like I get yeah. caught up in my life and I forget to really intentionally pray for those people. Oh, that's normal. I mean, I was feeling convicted and I was like, Lord, I hope I haven't like dropped the ball on this and left it too long. And so we always go through seasons where we totally. be feeling like we need to be doing more. Yeah. And it's also, I guess, a reminder as well that there's nothing we can personally do mm. that will get someone across the line. It all is supernatural yes. and it all is the Holy Spirit and the Lord. So what our job is, is to prompt people and to, to start those conversations Mm. and to be a witness through our lives through our conversations through all those things but i think we also need to trust that the salvation that god has given us is eternal and that we can give those fears and anxieties and even like you were saying with your with um, your friend like 
when you don't know how to surrender those things to God, life gets a whole lot harder. Mm. So it's kind of learning, okay, let's surrender those things. I can find rest in God because I know where my salvation is and I can trust that he is good. So the little things don't need to matter as much. Yeah, absolutely. Truly my soul finds rest in God and my salvation comes from him. Truly he is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress and I will never be shaken. I hope that this verse gives you a moment of rest and encouragement that when you love God, when he is your salvation, you can trust that he is your rock, that he is your fortress and your safe place, that you don't need to be fearful or afraid of what's happening because you can remember and trust that God is good. I cannot wait to dive even deeper into the Word of God with you tomorrow, but until then, I pray you're able to find moments of joy.